when you have the last few reps to do and you're in the most intense pain, I don't know, there's some sort of little switch in your brain. You know, there's times you might want to give up and that's where I think it, it's great for your mental side, your mental health as well, because there's workouts you just have to go to your dark place inside and say, right, I'm going to fight through this. Um, that just says keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. You also have the two lads there with you going, come on, come on, come on, come on, egging you on, you know, building your confidence and stuff like that. You learn an awful lot more about yourself. You know where your limits are. You realise that when you are when you are stopped and you just think you can't go anymore, that you can. One split jerk, five rounds. Increase weight slightly each time. Just this the problem. That's all right. Oh, this one here. You don't need like that. That one. Uh, growing up as a kid, massive tomboy. There wasn't many girls in my estate, so I spent most of my time out on the green playing football, soccer with the lads. I played football with St. Lawrence's just out road outside of Thai, and uh, it was football and rugby. I started playing rugby at the age of ten. Um, so sports has always been a huge part of my life. I was playing football since I was seven. I basketball in school, and you know I done a little bit of athletics as well growing up. And I went uh, to college and became a fitness instructor. Always loved uh, fitness. Always loved PE in school. Typical country boy lived out in the middle of nowhere. So basically all we could do was kick around, play football out in the garden. I'm kind of giving away my age a bit now, but when I was really young, it wasn't on PlayStation and stuff like that. You're out kicking around the ball outside myself and Carl and my brother would be out. One lad would be in goals and one lad would be taking shots in them. We could spend four or five hours outside playing around, so being active was a massive part of being a kid. Left school, I joined the army. And I joined the army at 18. And from there, again, continued all my sports. Uh, I passed out on my platoon, best sportsman. So that was after three years, because we'd done an apprenticeship. So it was three years in the apprentice school in NACE, and um, I passed out best sportsman. I'm teaching kids um, hip hop. So I became a hip hop dance teacher. I've been doing that for like 16 years. Um, I finished that in June of this year. And then I went back to college in September. And I've recently just been qualified personal trainer. And I am coaching here in 3D. You're dropping from below, you're never hanging from below. Yeah, you're dropping here and then you're getting up and then you're spotting us. Your body, your arms get up. Yeah. No, no, it's fun, it's all fun. Painfully fun. Four, five, six, seven, back. Let's go. Ready? One, two, three, four. Right. Emotionally, physically, yes. Oh my god. 20 seconds in there, here and there, that was going. This bunch of crossfit me fucking whole. Like, I'm out of this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not worth it. The competition will be worth it. Yeah, that's six weeks away. CrossFit for me kind of started, I suppose, three years ago. Um, for a couple of years, I suppose, fitness-wise, I got lazy. I was still playing rugby, but I put on an awful lot of weight. I'd probably gone up to, for a guy my height, it was a bit much. I'd gone up to maybe 96, 97 kilos, which is 
it's far too heavy for what it was. Like in January of last year, the lads were setting up 3G Fitness here, and I was mad to try it out and, and give it a go. And I got a couple of lads to do it with me, and we started off with the circuit class, and instantly loved it. Actually, first day I didn't puke on my first day. Best thing I found with fitness was the community aspect of it. Okay, so like in GEA, you had a team, it was a team event. In the army, you're always training with your platoon. So again, that was, you know, you're around people, you're, people are helping you out. Number one, the people. Like I know everybody in everybody else's gym is gonna say, I love the people, love the people, but that's what it is about. I love the people. I love the social aspect of it. I love chatting to people. I love working out beside somebody because you know the person beside you is gonna push you to work harder. Uh, you're helping people out and I suppose that's how I got into CrossFit really. It's, uh, it's, it's that being able to train with different people, you know, of all ages, of all fitness, different, different levels and it's that, it's that team event in WADS is kind of what I'm getting. It's, it's part of my life now, more so than just something I, I enjoy every day. It's CrossFit for me. As cliche as that sounds, that's what it is. That's one thing, I, I, ne I was never a gym bunny. I never liked going to the gym and doing my own thing. I like working in a group, therefore, that's what I love about CrossFit. Every night it's a group. Something that, it's enjoyment, it's pain, it's suffering, it's everything rolled into one, but it's so beneficial in so many ways to your life, not just for fitness. Like mentally, for me personally, it, it got me out of a slump and I went into that slump because of injury, because of sickness. And it's easy, happen. it happens to so many people, but now, it's my life and I love it. I couldn't ask for more from it. I love the aspect of having a good engine. You wouldn't lift a bar or you wouldn't do a burpee or, you know, you could look class, but not necessarily be fit. So is that fitness? Not in my eyes, it's not fitness. That's why I love CrossFit because your engine is really good. Yeah, this is in the water. There's eight reps in this one. 55 kg one. Go, drop. So we just kind of stuck oh, sandbags together. Drop, 55 kg. Go. Go. It's just something to practice for because go. we don't actually have it. It was the last minute the, the change the yeah. event and they put it's in a two person more. Now, it could have been there in the background for a final or something in the day. We don't know. But, so this is like, again, we're a week out. We just have to get our hands on something for the day. Like. Uh, snatch and thrusters, so you do 27 snatch, 27 thrusters, 23, 23, 19, 19. Tag anyway you want to tag. So your judge knows you finish yours. Next person comes in. Heavy or go home. First workout with this snatch and uh, thrusters, it's like, it's full body. You have to use your full body in the snatch, you use your full body in the thruster, so it's just taxing. Then you have the first workout before that with the rings, toast rings, ring push-ups, uh, toast the rope. It's more of a pain in the ass than anything else. So, as quick as fast, get it done as quick as you can. It just tires you a little bit for that one. You're not too fatigued. Barbell, barbell just, the barbell just knocks the crap out of you. And that's what this workout's gonna do. It's gonna test people's uh, lung capacity and obviously keep in form because once you start to lose form doing snatch, it gets very fatiguing on the lower back, the legs. So it's a good workout. They're burning a lot of calories and then a week out they're gonna try up their carbs a little. Acting sugars into the system works, gives, gives you energy during your workout. So you'll see during the day, like guys will have a lot of jellies on them. <laughs> There'll be jellies everywhere, even though like food jellies are like bad food or whatever. Well, that's is bad food, but they're quick acting sugar, so it give you energy. So, like when I was, I was in the Celtic series earlier this year, and um, I had cereal with me, I had jellies, uh, pre-workouts or whatever. But like post-workout, it was like jellies because you had an hour of a gap. So you don't want to have a big like rice and chicken or whatever big meal in between where it's going to take ages to digest so quick sugar to get in i have a theory and like we use it a good lot in here is like the wrong food at the right time works so like jellies are like cereal after pre and post workout good recovery like once it would seem within reason you're not eating jellies all day we are one week out from competition
competition so it's saturday before it so just going through kind of tactics and stuff for the workouts we've done all the workouts already we know what we can do just you know just basic little things about it nothing major uh, the week running up to it I'm not going to train too heavy keep moving keep stretching do a few rom wads and stuff like that and then just bring us up to the competition we had previously done a competition with brian and uh, jason um and it was class didn't i was very 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 nervous because i'd already done one in-house one here in 3d and like oh, jesus even through my years of dancing i've never actually been that nervous being on stage or anything like that and i was like don't want to feel this don't want to do this so i'm not mad into doing one of my own but put me in a team with somebody and i just like absolutely eat that up when a competition comes out and it's been announced i, I think there's there's certain individuals it's going to be thinking the same way three people that absolutely love the, the sport it is a sport so three people that love the sport but they love the grind you have to love the grind you have to love the hard work you have to be willing it's almost willing to hurt to get through it and if you have that mindset it goes a long way and the two of them had that in bucket holes. So. Once are released and have been released over the last couple of days and we'll chat about it with the three of us together. You'll see who's stronger at what. Your pride has to go out the window. You can't be like, oh well, like I really like snatching so I just want to do all that. You can't do that. You have to go, who is the best at doing that, that and that. Right, feck it. That's the way we're going to like divide it up or whatever. Of course you're going to be nervous. But you can be nervous in my opinion you can be nervous and nerves are good but it's how to how to channel your nerves how to control it when the wild clock goes on 10 seconds countdown or something like that and the nerves just go Ooh. but as soon as that clock beeps head is in the game you're just like straight into it like there's no the nerves just go boom fun before the workouts just keeping calm and myself just thinking about what i have to do but then when you're out there you don't know what's going on around you. You can't hear the crowd. You can't hear the music. Anyone will tell you that. Everything that's going on just goes blur and it goes blank. You concentrate on what you're doing. You could have, if you ask me to tell you, tell you what songs were playing when we took part in the competition last year, when we were working out, I could not tell you. Once you hit the competition floor, you, you have to believe you've, you've prepped as much as you can and you're just gonna do your best and there's nothing more you could have done. Being on a team from a gym, number one, you're representing your gym. So we're representing True Tree Fitness. Um, you're not just representing myself, Brian and Dad, you're representing every member that's in this gym because like, they want the absolute best from you and they know you're gonna give your absolute best, but still you want to come back and be like, oh my God, like we did this and we did that, or we got to the semis or maybe not, or we did really well in that one. Like, so you're really, really working for everybody that's in the gym. And I know that sounds probably real and cliche and real corny, but it's the bloody truth, like, do you know what I mean? And you want to come back into your town and be like, geez, do you hear the lads from 3G? They did really well, you know? That's the utmost importance. But then it goes down to the tree, really, do you know? And like, we've all families and we've all kids as well. And our kids are great supporters as well. And like, you want to come home to your child and be like, oh, geez, look what mommy did, or, you know? It's big, like, you know. They're going to be closely contested. That's where you're going to get a lot of people that are, you might get your stronger teams that will finish further back in those sprint ones. Like they're two and a half minutes as hard as they can. Sometimes it might be the fitter team, like someone with a bit more fitness will go well in them. But the more technical stuff, it's for the longer ones, which is the second part in most workouts. Bar maybe the first one we're doing, which is just it's grunt work. Yeah, it's grunt work. It's grunt, yeah. Like the first workout is grunt work for us, but other teams will be doing different workouts at the start. But that workout number three is, that is I think that's the Very one that sorts, sorts out your your top teams from your other teams because it's how much grunt work you can put in it's just empty your tank in the first part and then you have 30 seconds rest and then you have to empty the tank again 
I'm super excited. Yeah, super excited. Excited, yeah. super excited. Excited to be the word. It's that's all really. It's like I said to him earlier. It's it. This is like being in the county final. You know, it's it's so Irish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is so Irish. It is so Irish. I'm very are, nervous. I'm I am actually genuinely very nervous because I want to do well, but so excited for the day. The scale of the event as well is really, really exciting. Watching our ex athletes as well. Lucas Hoberg, Hoberg is there, so that's kinda cool. Says Would you more. agree boys? Yeah. Yeah, well he's a good looking yeah. man, good so that's why man, she's yeah. excited. <laughs> Well, for me, workout one was the toughest, so it was the sprint, which I had a 15 kg plate, Daz had a 50 kg deep ball, Brian had 25 kg plate, so we did 10 meter sprints up to Skierg and back and tag each other for two and a half minutes to get as many rounds as possible. Um, got an O-rep, I got an O-rep, stupidly put the plate down between it, didn't realise. Brian got one for not having his full foot on the Skierg, which Harsh. Which which he said it was, which you're lucky you have to go with your judge. Um, and then we had a 30 second rest where we switched over. So you'd leg it out 10 meters and I had 14 cals on Skierg. Basically go as fast as you can. Back in, pick up the 15 kg plate and I had 14 reverse lunges. You can alternate them if you want. I just stayed in the one because of the dodgy knee. So I just stayed in the one, the right leg. Then I had seven cleans with a 30 kg D ball. And then the ball roll, which was horrendous, wasn't it? It was yeah. terrible. My biceps were just about to bulge out my arms. So 10 meters out, 10 meters back, then you tag. Brian took over then, and then Daz took over then. Got dragged over the line at the end. Dragged over oh, the line at the end. Line, was yeah. it? Good and time, good time of the day though. I think it was the fastest time of the yeah. day. Shook. Shook. Yeah. Absolutely shook. Yeah, it was weird. And, and everybody on the uh, um, Intermediate RX Fitness, anyone you talked to, that, that workout was killer. It just blew killer. the. Bum, it's what you bum call you. Yeah. It's what you call a dog workout. You just It was dog work. There was not too technical in it. It was just work hard for the amount of time you were on the floor. So it just flagged you, like it wrecked your body. Um, and that was our first, when you looked at it on paper, it was worker number three. So we thought it was the end of the day, it was actually the first one. So it made the other ones a bit tougher because it took so much of your body straight off the bat. And coming into the other ones, you're obviously a little bit more fatigued. So. I was glad we did the first one oh, yeah, because yeah, it was, fresh. for me, it was the toughest. And I was glad to get it out of the way. And it kind of settled all your nerves then because... Especially, you know. especially when we were fastest in it. Yeah. It was good to see like that we set a standard for ourselves from the off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how fucked I was out there. Oh, no, I said no way. I'm done. I just, I thought I got over the yellow line to the ground and just fall back. Next, white line, next two arms get pulled. I was going to say, I just see only done. Yeah, I know. She tried you only. As soon as I got off the skier, I just wanted to stop. I was top three. Like, I was in so much pain. I was like, oh shit. How am I going to finish this for the boys? That's only wide one. 
Into the gate or the railing? Because they were going Where to go around. From? You and your clean and your wall cleans, I went to step out to talk you. One was the behind liner and snow wreck. Oh my god. So when you went to step out, it was pulling you back. Man, I swear. Need I, ice to that was tough. Chest is torn out. Workout two was two and a half minutes of 32 kg goblet squats. That's what I was doing. And the guys were doing a eight reps of a synchronized warm squats. So we had to get as many rounds as possible between the three of us um, in two and a half minutes. So, but for me, this was this was my toughest. Um, I think we. I think it was the speed. It was the speed. It was the speed of of the squats that we were doing, and again, it was like an RX weight, thirty two kg kettlebell. Um, we like when we did the squats, it was there were possibly eight or, eight or nine seconds before he was back on. Oh, I was back on again, and I think I clocked up 64, 64 reps on on doing them squats. It, I, I was gassed. Now I mean. For the, for the remainder part of that workout, we had 30 seconds rest and then we were into uh, dumbbell snatch. Dumbbell snatch, synchronized dumbbell snatch, so we were on different weights. Uh, and then we had a synchronized burpees over the warm, and then it was kettlebell swings, swings, 15 kettlebell swings back on the 32 kg. So what happened there was 30 seconds rest. I, I, was, I was goosed, goose going into it. Like, I mean, gas. Goose and that's a good word. Goose. Goose. <laughs> Ducked. <laughs> From a mental, you were, you were mentally, I was like suffering at that stage. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's one of the worst times I've ever been. Because you're usually really quick at burpees, yeah. and I was quicker. Yeah, she was. Uh, quick, uh, she was quick. Quick. <laughs> But again, it, so. it was just too many. It was too many. So not too many time. squats in that space of time with that weight. I was absolutely good. Do you know what I found with that one though? I found everything was up, down, up, down, up, down, and your head never got a chance to kind of recoup where you were. There was no air in the room either, so. Sharp, like you said, it was only yeah. 10 seconds of a breather and you're going again. Like, yeah. that, especially that first part, it's like yeah. dying up now. Yeah, like she was, like she was actually look at all of us. Well, she takes one person. Yeah. So I was getting up first, but it seems as I went, as I went forward. That's how she was saying. I think it's getting in second with over a minute to go. Oh, we never won it. We never won five left. Workout three of the day was a two part workout. Why are you smiling? Like? <laughs> two part workout. Uh, the first part was the two minute 30, you have three rounds to do. I had seven ring push ups, Ali had six toes to roll, Brian had toast rings. seven toast rings. You had three rounds of that. To be honest, I think the three was weren't even tired after. That was just. That was, that was fine. I was like a precursor to, to the hard part of the workout. It wasn't, it wasn't tough at all. Like, I wasn't tired, you weren't tired. We got through really fast. I think we did one of the like, quicker times of the day as well. Yeah, I think we were super excited to get onto the bar. Yeah, anyway. the bar was the bar that I was in. So I remember starting off that snatch happy one. I remember my first three snatches didn't fully extend, just trying to go for speed. Yeah. I just, myself, I went bang bang and like thought it was up. So then I had to kind of slow down a little bit, start fully extending. That was just a fun workout. Yeah, it was also called um, Snatch Handy. It was called Snatch Handy. That's what we no, called it. Happy. Snatch happy. Did I call it Snatch Happy? I felt, I felt good. I, I think sure. we all felt yeah, good. I, that was after lunch and uh, I got my energy second back. Wind. Got my second win back. I, I think once you have a barbell yeah, bar bar in a workout, everybody wants to do it. Yeah. And I remember the standout part for me was the amount of fucking work she did. Sorry for the language, but the amount of work that Ali put into it. The last round of thrusters, she'd just stay going. And I was there just waiting to see. I know I was, count, I was counting like reps behind in my head. My mom's counting, but Ali was just like up and down. I was like, am I going to get used to bar at all? I was just like up and down, up and down, up and down. And she just banged, even like I remember uh, Lorraine was there watching where her friend is in the gym as well. Like they were entering it and just like, look at Ali doing the snatch. I've never seen anything like it. Like just banging it out up and down. She was faster than, by far than any woman there. That's what really stood out as a team for us, the strength of, and of the, our female member of the team, she just blasted through it as if it was not for her. So like, obviously you're proud of that. Well done. Yeah. 
<laughs> we topped our group, we made it to the final. We won six out of seven, or five out of six workouts, so we're into the final. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, kind of like um, a bit like, really? Because that just happened, but super excited. Super excited to do the final because it's really cool. Stuff I like. Bye. We were top of the group by 15, 20 points, whatever it was. So that means we're definitely in the final. So we were excited for that. We weren't sure what time the final was at, but then we checked the teams, what other teams were in the final heat with us, and it turns out our name wasn't in the final heat. So at about quarter to five, 20 to five, the final was supposed to be five o'clock, we had to run to the judges and said, we won our group, why aren't we in the final? And uh, they just kind of said, oh, there was just, it was human error, wasn't it? It's just character error. Character error. Critical error. Critical, and critical, critical error, but uh, yeah, we, we got it straightened out. And then, from, like we knew for we knew we were in the final. We'd done all the work to get there, but to see on, on a screen in front of you, to say you're not there, it's very frustrating as you're picking One, two, up three, four. We, I mean, yeah, double counting the teams that are in the final and everything. We were like, why aren't we in it? Feeling good, actually, weren't we? Yeah, I, I was actually feeling very proud to be honest, because we were, we were the first to be called out to walk to our lane, and our lane was one, which is the bottom end of the room. Yeah, so, yeah. And we had to walk the whole way, and you knew everybody was watching and going, oh, these lads made it to the final, oh, cool, or whatever. And I was looking along the, along the railing to see where our team was, and they happened to be up the top at that. They didn't know, even know they were we were in that lane, and they just happened to be there. And as soon as we got there, then the big old cheer up, like, you know, it was, it was, it was brilliant, like, you know. Go. I love the fact that you've got every kind of walk of life there on the day. Like, I love the fact that aesthetically what you look like in a fitness competition I mean, is completely irrelevant. Like, you know, you could be any size, but you could be as strong as an ox or, you know what I mean, typically looking like this, but not able to do a burpee or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's very individual, isn't it? Just to follow on from that, remember the team that was beside us, the Northern fella, like he was in his late 40s or whatever, but he was like, for him, he's like, what else should you be doing on yeah. a Saturday? It was his day out, like, he mm -hmm. just wanted to have a bit of fun. And when he saw us rock up beside him again and wanted to work, he says, oh, not you again. Like, he, we were doing well, and he was like, oh, not you again. But he's, remember, he's having, a laugh, he's having a laugh with us, a bit of banter. And that's what it's about, too. For, some, for us, it, we're competitive by nature. For us, it was competition. For others, it's a day out challenging themselves to see how far they can push themselves. It's not about coming top of the group or winning the fine. For us, it's about that, again, it's competitive nature. For others, it's like just having a day out, having a bit of fun, doing what you do in day out day in day out in the gym. Really, this is our first event as a team. It's my second event ever. I'm, I'm, I'm personally doing, only doing this, what, 10 months? Me and you, 10 months? And you're up against guys and girls that are doing it like years, so. We done well. We learned an awful lot. And I think going forward for me, it's to do another few to get experience on the floor. It's, it's just like, it's just to get that experience on the floor. You can do so much here in the gym, mm. it's but it's, it, it's, when you're in that environment, you just need that, that kind of life experience in, the, in that event or in, in that setup. I think it's, it's good to be patient during a wad as well because when you're not patient, that's when mistakes happen and that's when you get no rep. Yeah. So to have that mentally as well as you're being physically well able to do it, I think that's the key as well. Definitely super proud of the three of us. We worked our butts off. Um, 
I don't think we could have done any more. Very proud of all our supporters that came out with us. And uh, yeah, definitely gonna do it again. It's good times. See ya.